It can be difficult to know where to start when you're analyzing your chess games. So in this video, I'm going to break down how to use an online engine to get the most out of your analysis. Learning something new can be a little bit overwhelming, but if you have the right resources, you can learn about anything you're interested in. Enter brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best way to learn things like math, data science, and computer science interactively. They have thousands of customizable lessons that allow you to work at your own pace. Wait, so I'm in the car. I have to go forward. So I have to find one that says go forward. Okay, move forward. Whether you want to brush up on the basics or dive into some more advanced topics, Brilliant makes learning fun. And then I have to find one that says turn right. It's easy to sign up and start exploring all of their lessons today. You can try Brilliant for free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash Cameron. The first 200 signups will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org slash Cameron. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. So let's start by going through all the parts of a typical chess analysis UI that you will see online. So first of all, what's this little bar? This shows who is winning. A lot of times you'll see this when you're watching commentary of a game and the players obviously can't see this, but it shows if there's more white in the bar and you'll see it go down uh, further in this game, that means white is winning. If there's more black, that means black is winning. And then the little number, if it shows up up here, shows how much theoretically that person is winning by. And this usually is most closely related to material. So pawns are worth one point. Uh, bishops and knights are worth three, rooks are worth five, queens are worth nine, and the king is priceless. And that also helps us understand what's going on over here. So this is what happens if I turn on lines. And we'll actually start a little bit further into the position because engines usually favor white slightly at the very beginning of the game. And there's also specific openings that engines don't like. But if you play it against a human player, they're going to have a harder time practically dealing with it. So the very like minute engine evaluation doesn't really matter for the first few moves of the game. So another thing that you'll see in a lot of online analysis tools like this one on chess.com is you can turn on the explorer feature, which shows how many games in their database have been played in this exact position that's on the board and who won. So if I move my cam, after bishop d3, there have been 110 games in this exact position. 43% white has won, 22% has been a draw, 35% black has won. And then we can see on down the rest of the opening moves. The most common one is c5 in this position. I played the move knight f6, which brings us into only 29 games and white has a 48% win rate. So the explorer feature is most useful when you're prepping openings because it shows you sort of what is generally being played. And a lot of times you can look at grandmaster games and see what the masters are playing and then compare that to what amateurs are playing. And for me, it's just like really interesting to look at that. And if you see that a particular move or line has a very high win rate for one side, it's really interesting to go see if the engine actually agrees that that player has a major advantage or if it's actually just human error and people falling for traps. But let's go a little bit further into this game. We're on move 25 and as we can see, white has a plus 0.8 advantage. If it's black's advantage, you say minus. And this is the equivalent of being up 0.85 pawns. So if it was plus one, like a whole one, that would be the equivalent of being up a pawn. And it's interesting because in this position, white actually is up a pawn. But because black has slightly better piece placement, it means that the advantage is not so clear as being up a solid pawn. And it can be hard to know exactly why that is. I think in this case, it's very simply like the doubled pawns and also the fact that black has just really good control over the C file. And now on the next move, it actually swings into black's favor. Even though black is down an entire pawn, it's the equivalent of being up half a pawn. So a lot of times these very slight swings don't really matter, but it's when you're not taking advantage of the good position that you have or the material that you have that these very slight inaccuracies start to add up to a little bit more of an advantage. And you'll see the engine slowly start to more and more agree that one side is winning. But of course, it's hard to know exactly why this is when you're analyzing it and even harder to know why this is when you're actually in the game. In this case, the only move to keep the advantage, the slight advantage that black has is to take on f5, which I think I did in the game. And now the rook captures back. And the problem with moving this pawn up is that it removed itself as the defense of the g pawn. And so if we can get rid of the rook, 
Um, the engine wants either H6 or I think G6 makes the most sense, just kicking the rook out. And then this knight can go and win the pawn back. But that's not what happened in the game. And keep an eye on the eval bar on the side because you'll see it start to slightly swing now in white's favor as I attack the queen. Queen moves. I give the check, trading off rooks for some reason. And then engine says, queen f1, only way to keep the draw. White did not play this, they moved down. And black still holds a 0.3 advantage. Obviously, it's really hard to tell these very minuscule things when you're actually playing the game. I thought I was just simply down a pawn. I didn't realize that I had a slight computer advantage because of moves that were going to happen many, many moves away. And now queen c2 check is the move they wanted, which defends the knight and then also leaves this square open for the knight to potentially come up and, you know, attack the queen or whatever it wants to do. But instead, I gave the check on d2, the king moved, and then I just blundered a piece because I was getting low on time, apparently. I don't think there's really an excuse for that even with just 45 seconds left, but suddenly white is obviously winning and you see how the eval bar went way down in white's favor and now suddenly there are multiple winning moves for white, even if they don't take, they can even play something like king g3 and just trap the knight. And the problem is that even if the knight gets away, white is still attacking this pawn and is coming in for some nasty threats over against my castled king, and suddenly my own threats have just sort of piddled out to nothing. So something like this, it's easy to see why the engine is suddenly giving white such a huge clear advantage. The harder thing, like I was saying earlier, is when the engine is just giving you a slight advantage. How do you deal with that? How do you realize when you sort of went wrong? For most players at the club level, you're not going to be seeing a whole bunch of positional mistakes slowly adding up to something that's actually going to lose you the game. It's going to be very simple things either like this or a multi-move tactic, things along those lines. And when you look at a graph like this, it's sort of clear to see the story of the game. So down this little dip, this is the point where white made the small mistake, positional mistake, sort of leaving this pawn a little bit weaker, looser. And then this giant spike here with the white is where I blundered my knight. So how do you use this? It's not very healthy to just always rely on engine moves because you are a human and so is your opponent. And so things that the computer might see, some crazy sacrificing line, your opponent is never going to see that in a game. And so it's not worth spending a ton of time when you're analyzing to look at that and understand like where you went wrong, if there was something you could have done differently. But simple blunders like this, obviously that's something that you need to take into account and figure out why you made that particular move. So obsession with the engine, not good. Don't do it. It's not worth, especially in like the opening, to look at the little minuscule differences in certain moves that you could potentially be making. It's much more about looking for practical options for yourself and something that you understand the plan, something that makes the most sense to you. And there are situations where the bar will spike like this, but you're not sure why, you don't know why your move was so bad. And in those cases, it's good to look a couple moves down through the engine line, going back to that analysis, um, to see what exactly the engine wants out of that particular move and what they see a few moves in advance. Sometimes you'll find that it actually does make sense. Like in three moves, there is a check that your opponent will find that will win them an extra pawn. But you really just have to use common sense. If you look at a line that the engine is suggesting and you're like, yeah, okay, I don't think anybody in their right mind would have played that or even considered playing that quiet pawn move that sets up some positional threat in 15 moves from now, yeah, it's probably not really worth going that deep into it. But the engine can be a helpful tool and it's worth knowing how it looks, how to use it, how to understand it. And as long as you can verbalize exactly what your mistake was and why it was a mistake, that means that you're using the engine correctly and as a good tool. I also think if you're analyzing a classical game that you potentially played over the board, it's worth looking at it without an engine first. You can look at it with your opponent if they're available after the game, or you can just look at it by yourself and maybe write down your own thoughts before you bring it to the engine and see what the objective truth of the position was. But that'll just help you in the long run get better at evaluation and understanding your own thought process. I hope this helped you understand a little bit better how to make the most out of the engine as a tool for your own analysis. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon.